And it is with great pleasure and honor that I introduce the President and CEO, Mr. Richard Portis. On behalf of, of the entire Destination British Columbia team, I gratefully acknowledge that we are gathering on the territory of the Coast Salish peoples and thank the Musqueam, Squamish and Salyut nations for welcoming us onto their territories. I was inspired, moved, encouraged by the welcome we received from Alec Dan uh, on Wednesday and the welcomes we received last night. I also acknowledge that the work we do stretches across the territories of all Indigenous peoples in British Columbia who have been caring for the land for millennia. We inspire people to visit here and we accept our responsibility to do our work through the lens of stewardship and reconciliation. We're on a journey to do that work better. I'd also like to thank Minister Mark for her support of British Columbia's tourism industry over the last year and for leading us on this journey of recovery and renewal. And of course, our board of directors and our tourism marketing committee have also been on this journey with us and I thank them for their guidance. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the Tourism Industry Association of British Columbia and the BC Hotel Association for joining forces to host this conference in person. It's been great to get together again. And you can probably tell from my voice I've enjoyed myself too much over the last couple of days. I also applaud all of you, British Columbia's tourism operators, associations, marketers, sectors, partners, and colleagues for all the efforts you've made and the resilience you've shown over the last two years. You've had everything thrown at you, a global pandemic, wildfires, flooding, highway closures, extreme heat, even a few earthquakes and tornadoes. And now, a war in Europe. We're all deeply shocked and saddened by the devastation and loss of life that's occurring uh, as we speak in the Ukraine. And our thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people. As Deirdre said yesterday, tourism brings many benefits to the world, including promoting peace and goodwill through the learning we gain and the connections we make when we visit other countries. We, the tourism industry, help facilitate people learning more about each other, other cultures, communities, and learning to appreciate uh, each other. And that contributes to pre peace and prosperity. That's needed more than ever now. And of course, we'll adjust our plans for 2022 if necessary as the situation in the Ukraine unfolds. Despite all the daunting challenges we've faced and those that lie ahead of us, we're still optimistic about 2022. We're seeing strong signals of recovery and renewal. Key industry performance indicators have shot up as COVID-related restrictions have been relaxed. We saw a strong family day weekend at Big White with strong bookings for spring break. Most potential travelers in our key markets are vaccinated and travel barriers are being rolled back. So as a result, we're seeing lots of indicators of pent up demand converting to actual travel, which we'll share market by market in a few minutes. While 2022 is officially the year of the tiger, Expedia is also calling 2022 the year of the goat or the greatest of all trips. In a recent survey, the company found that 65% of respondents are planning to go big on their next trip. People have been waiting to travel, and they're not shying away from international destinations and big once-in-a-lifetime adventures. Today is going to be all about the work we are doing together to capture more than our share of that demand now and propel tourism and British Columbia forward now. So please keep track of any questions you have during the presentation. We'll answer as many as we can in the Q&A at the end using Slido. Our marketing directors are also hosting a session later this morning on our 2022 marketing plans to provide more detail. Usually, you see just a few of us in these presentations. Today, I want to introduce you, or reintroduce you, to more of the Destination British Columbia team. We're working hard day after day on your behalf. Here, let's take a look. Destination BC is recognized globally for our strong brand, our award-winning leading edge marketing, and our destination management strategies. But you don't always get to see the people behind all that work. Today, we want to recognize our team too. 
We at Destination BC are a group of dedicated individuals who live and breathe British Columbia. Whether we're playing in the falling snow, working from home, or out for an adventure with our families and friends, we work hard, play to our strengths, and consider it a privilege to share the transformative power of BC with the world. Destination BC is a community, a smart, creative, innovative, and fun one. Did I say hardworking? Everyone has a part to play in enabling this industry's success, including program coordinators, finance, digital content, IT, HR, media and marketing, communications, destination management, research and analytics, and more. We're working to make the experience of traveling to and around BC better, and make the experience of being a part of BC's tourism industry better too. We're very lucky at Destination BC. We get to work for all the amazing people in British Columbia, and we get to work with amazing people. privilege to work with such an amazing team. So if you take one thing away from today, let it be that there's a dedicated and talented group of professionals here to support you and to take best advantage of the great opportunities that lie ahead of us. Last year, we adapted our corporate strategy and marketing plans to support recovery from the pandemic. This year, we'll be developing a new three-year strategy to align with the British Columbia Economic Plan and the Provincial Strategic Framework for tourism that Minister Mark will discuss later today. Our work will include consultation with industry, so keep an eye out for that starting later this spring. Our optimistic and mid-range scenarios are for a return to 2019 revenue levels by 2024. However, for us, real recovery means sustainable, profitable businesses offering compelling experiences to visitors and able to attract the labour they need. That's what we're all working toward. Of course, as you, we know only too well, the real world will evolve differently than our current scenarios. We're seeing that with the war in Ukraine. We're tracking European, or the impact on European interest in travel, as well as on fuel, price, fuel and food prices. We've seen oil price spikes in the past, and we're pretty confident that we understand the impact on travel, and we'll make adjustments as we need. So we'll shift our activities quickly, as needed, as we have for the last two years. In fact, some of our marketing partners in Europe have already temporarily paused their marketing efforts on our behalf and are actively engaged in providing relief for Ukrainian refugees as we speak. Today, we want to share with you some significant parts of our plans for 2022 and the work we're doing to support you and industry recovery. We'll share highlights from our marketing plan to generate travel to British Columbia now a progress report on our Invest in Iconic strategy, our sharpened focus on destination stewardship, our collective efforts on destination development and emergency management, and our commitment to Indigenous engagement and lasting, meaningful reconciliation. And now, please welcome Maya Lang, our brilliant and inspiring Vice President of Global Marketing, who will share our 2022 plans to support immediate and long-term recovery and renewal. Welcome, Maya. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Richard. Uh, just reflecting that today, two years ago, is the day that, this, that COVID-19 was uh, recognized as, uh, as a pandemic. So it just feels like we're coming full circle um, and uh, just wanted to recognize the enormity of, of today and, and where we get to be. So uh, I, what I wanted to share today is um, over the last two years, our teams have continued to work really hard to adapt to every challenge that has come our way. And I think we are all so relieved that we're finally seeing what feels like the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. And through all of this, the global marketing team has worked really hard to keep pace and to support you. We pivoted and launched support local campaigns when we were in lockdown to support local businesses, artisans, and families in BC. 
we pivoted again and launched campaigns to support province-wide travel when it was allowed. We pivoted again when the borders opened in the US and overseas, and we launched campaigns in Washington and in California to promote ski, as well as in Germany and the UK. But that is nothing compared to what many of you have endured. On behalf of the entire team at Destination BC, we are humbled and in awe of all of you who worked so hard to keep your businesses, your employees, and the BC tourism industry going through all the challenges over the last two years. We were inspired by those of you who went above and beyond to help others, such as the small ship tour operators of BC who sent their vessels on missions to clean up shores during the lockdown. The communities among you who supported local businesses, such as Kamloops with their Love in the Loops passport program. The businesses among you who had to go virtual and persevered despite everything, such as the Cold Snap Winter Music Festival in Prince George that held its event online. And those of you who explored new ways to continue to support artisans, such as the Haida Gwaii Museum at Kiel Nagai, who opened an online store. Those of you who launched new reasons to visit, such as the Surrey Spice Trail, with 70 restaurants, many of whom are owned and operated by Canadians with South Asian or Middle Eastern roots. There's been so much innovation and inspiration in the face of adversity, and now it feels like we are finally facing a brighter future. The global marketing team has literally been waiting for this moment for the better part of the last six months, and we've been reimagining what recovery could look like and preparing for this moment. We've been getting advice from our industry-based tourism marketing committee. We've been actively planning with the national, regional, and community DMOs around the province. We've, of course, been talking directly uh, with our in-market teams in Germany, Australia, and around the world, and we've been talking to individual business operators all around the province, preparing for this moment. We are literally launching seven campaigns in seven markets in six weeks. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we know we have a challenge ahead of us, and in looking at something like search behavior, for example, which we know correlates to bookings, we know that consideration for travel to Canada, including BC, has dropped considerably in one of our key markets, in fact, in all of our markets, but in particular in the US. US interest for domestic travel, so travel within their own country, has surpassed the pre-pandemic levels, while interest of American travelers for travel to Canada is still down about 30% compared to 2019. And this pattern is very similar for all of our markets because, of course, we were not able to actively, consistently promote travel to BC for over two years. And it shows in something like search travel behavior, which we know, uh, as I said, is directly correlated to bookings. We know that during the upcoming recovery competition for the high value international travelers and even for domestic travelers will be fierce. For example, we've seen that the cost of digital marketing increased significantly as we've all turned virtual and online over these last two years. And other sectors like goods and services have been vying for consumer attention, for our attention and dollars. We also know that we've seen budgets of destination marketing organizations around the world increase as part of recovery. But our goal for recovery is very clear, to generate demand from visitors and increase visitation and revenue to more areas in BC and across more seasons. To do this and recover quickly, we are adopting a two-speed approach, as my friend Roy Schwinn at Destination Vancouver coined recently. The first speed is the fastest. It is all about immediate recovery. We have a powerful lineup of campaigns and plans for 2022, literally in the next four to six weeks. I'm going to share a little bit of a high level approach, but for all the details, I want to just do another shout out for my team, for Carla Grennan and Maria Green, who are going to be running a session at 11.15 this morning in Minaru Ballroom A dedicated to the 2022 Global Marketing Campaign Plan. In a few minutes, Maria Green's gonna join us on stage and she's going to share some of the highlights 
of that immediate recovery plans, including an overview of our international brand campaign, which we're all so proud of, that we're working on with international travel trade, with global airlines, and with travel media to create that interest and then convert that interest to bookings to BC. The second speed is our future secret sauce. You saw that that travel consideration chart from Google earlier and where Canada sits. We need to stand out in the world. And after Maria, Jacqueline Simpson is going to join us on stage and she's going to share an update on our iconic places and roots work that we'll be launching in 2023, which we believe will be the offering that will make more areas of BC stand out in the world and apart from the noise, improve geographic and seasonal dispersion. But let's get back to that speed one, the immediate recovery. We've analyzed reams of data, and we've selected the markets that we believe will help drive that revenue recovery more quickly. We know that we need to invest in both domestic and international travelers. A complete recovery for British Columbia is reliant on international travelers, more so than in any other province. In fact, in 2019, 50% of the tourism revenue was generated by international visitors, yet they only made up 25% of the visitors to BC. So think about that. We've also analyzed what Destination Canada is doing and where our partners are going to be investing their funds to identify where we can make the biggest difference. What we know is that Destination Canada will be investing heavily in domestic markets in 2022, and that is fantastic. So instead of adding to the noise and the already large investment for the same traveler, we are going to be investing and focusing on a strategic complementary role. So what do I mean by that? We are going to firstly partner, obviously, with Destination Canada to make sure that BC gets its unfair share of coverage in the domestic campaigns. Right, Marcia? <laughs> uh, so we work very closely with Destination Canada, but we want to make sure that we're getting our, our unfair share, I should say, of, uh, of coverage. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to focus on the shoulder seasons. So we're going to focus, we're going to lead our own campaigns um, in the domestic markets for spring and fall. In fact, spring, I think, launched on March 1st. We're also going to be focusing on ski. Michael J. will be happy to hear for winter <laughs> and the ski resorts in the room, which is obviously one of our key domestic travel motivators. In our international markets, the U.S. is one of our best immediate recovery opportunities, especially Washington and California. So for these markets, we will launch consumer direct campaigns with partners to promote BC during our key summer and winter periods. In addition, in our overseas markets this year, we're investing in integrated campaigns in Germany, Australia, and later this year in Germany that combine both the power of a brand campaign coupled with travel media and travel trade to create that inspiration, again, through to the bookings. Other markets that have normally been strong travel source markets for us, such as China and Mexico, are being monitored closely for increased investment, and we will make the, the move when the moment is right. We are committed to working with Destination Canada to inspire travel to BC and to Canada because we believe that having a strong Canada brand benefits BC, even more so here in British Columbia. And now I'm gonna welcome Maria Green, Director of Market Development, to share with you some of the activities on how we're inspiring travel to BC in 2022. Thanks, Maya. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I've spent 30 years as part of a global team that drives business in our international markets. It is no surprise to anyone that COVID restrictions continue to impact travel plans. With the situation changing weekly in our top overseas markets, consumer confidence, air capacity, and Canadian entry requirements continue to cause confusion and frustration for our travelers. However, we are seeing signals that there is strong desire to travel from all the international markets we are focusing on in 2022. The US, Germany, UK, Australia, Mexico, and China. 
For example, over in Germany, citizens can travel to any country if they are fully vaccinated. And approximately 82% of Germans are thinking of a vacation this year. The bookings from the UK surged once restrictions were removed. And in Australia and Mexico, Canada is seen as a safe place to visit, which bodes well for our future. We're anticipating China will remove some of the barriers that make it more difficult to travel to Canada, and travelers will come as soon as they can. There is lots of opportunity ahead of us. Travelers from all these markets are looking to reconnect with their friends and family. They want to stay longer in a destination, to explore wide open spaces, and have more meaningful and deeper cultural experiences. They seek a blend of urban and nature. For the markets where sustainability or responsible travel was important before, these values are even stronger now. It's great our borders are open, but there is now more competition than ever. So to secure business for this year and next year, we're going to capitalize on these themes. We've been working with all our partners, including Destination Canada and other DMOs, preparing for a triple action approach with campaigns, travel trade, and travel media activities. In late March, we will launch our BC Effect campaign in the UK and Australia. The BC Effect was originally launched in 2019 and then unfortunately sidelined by the pandemic, but is now more relevant than ever. It's an inspirational, high-impact global brand campaign to drive consideration for BC, which is then converted by booking for, uh, to bookings by travel trade. It includes indigenous stories and voices and features the diversity of our province. The BC effect is based on the key features of supernatural British Columbia. At the core of what appeals to international visitors is BC's nature and wilderness, our wildlife, and our cities surrounded by nature. The BC Effect is based on the scientific evidence that exposure to nature lowers blood pressure, reduces stress, promotes physical well-being, and increases creativity. Who doesn't need that right now? Through the power of the BC Effect, we're creating an emotional urgency for our target markets to choose BC. While this is a global brand campaign to drive consideration, we're also full speed ahead with more immediate, action-oriented campaigns in BC, Alberta, Ontario, and Washington to drive conversion now. Due to the pandemic, people in our core markets are even more interested in what British Columbia has to offer. And analysis shows that this campaign will be even more relevant as travel opens up once again. One could say that BC is the perfect antidote for all that ails us. All around the world, people have spent the last two years sitting on their couches watching Netflix or chatting with loved ones through a screen. Now they're craving something different. Change. Discovery. The awakening of a deeper connection to the wider world and ourselves. This transformative experience from belonging in nature to being part of it is intrinsic to the BC effect. Here, all life is connected. Here, nature will welcome you to explore not just new sites, but new sides of yourself. This next video was created with Indigenous Tour Tourism BC. The poem was written by Cohen Isberg, a talented ITBC family member and member of the Haida Nation. It is narrated by Justin Rain, an actor of Plains Cree descent. Find yourself here, in a performance of human and nature, spirits embracing, catching what we were chasing. And the silence is our thunderous applause. For we are connected. In these moments, we will find ourselves again through these places that we have been. We will be in awe, not of their beauty, but of ourselves that we can feel so deeply, be filled 
so completely. We will dig our toes deep and be rooted, for the soil contains the layers of our past. Stories from ancestors not past, but still living in us, our grounding force. So we are supported to spread our arms as we are welcomed into the forest, not by the name with which we arrived, but an ancient one. We have revived. We will reflect in the darkness of night. And when we whispered, trading stories with the sea, when we roared with the storm unapologetically, and when we bounced with the trees in laughter, we will reflect on when we went home and found ourselves in nature. I think that is some of the work that I'm the most proud of um, that our team has done at Destination BC, the global marketing team has done at Destination BC. And I'm so appreciative of the relationship and the partnership that we have with ITBC who worked on that so closely with us, so thank you. And thank you for the update, Maria. Through a combination of domestic and international marketing campaigns, our activities are really designed to get British Columbia back on that consideration set, ignite that desire to come to BC, and through all of our booking partners, convert trips to BC and drive that immediate recovery to all the businesses and communities across our beautiful province. I mentioned earlier that our marketing team is focused on that two-speed approach. So to speak to a major initiative in our speed two category, the success over the long term, I'd now like to introduce Jacqueline Simpson to share the highlights of the progress that's been made in the Invest in Iconic strategy launching in 2023. Thank you, Maya, and good morning, everyone. I have had the pleasure to work at Destination BC on the global marketing team since 2006. And as most of you know, I've loved working on data-driven marketing strategies and many of our global consumer campaigns. Last year, a colleague of mine gave me this book as a gift, Lonely Planets, Great Journeys, and it contains some of the most extraordinary places in the world to visit. But when I quickly glanced through the table of contents, I noticed that the book didn't contain any destinations in British Columbia. <laughs> what do they know? <laughs> there are many places in the world that could be described as epic journeys and must-see destinations or must-do experiences, such as Australia's Great Ocean Road, Patagonia's dramatic mountain peaks, Hawaii's surfing culture, Greece's ancient history, or Singapore's cuisine that brings the flavors of the world together. BC has all of this and more, and taken together, they are a compelling way to get our visitors to disperse throughout the province and visit throughout the year. And this is the essence of the Invest in Iconic strategy. Now, I'm an avid traveler, and my personal reason to travel is to explore. I like to go to far off islands that aren't always easy to get to, and I have a personal fondness for glaciers and icebergs. Uh, several years ago, before it was the hot destination to travel to, I was lucky enough to travel almost 6,000 kilometers to Iceland to see glaciers and icebergs in a place called Jokul Sarlon, also known as Iceberg Lagoon, which is about five hours drive from Reykjavik, um, Iceland's capital. But I didn't need to travel all that way. We have icebergs right here in the Caribou Chilcotin Coast region, and they're created by the Bridge Glacier, which is only about six hours from where I live. And wait, there's more icebergs. <laughs> 
There are also icebergs in Tatshenshini Alsek Provincial Park in the stunning northwest corner of beautiful northern BC. And while Iceberg has just 270 glaciers, there are over 17,000 glaciers in British Columbia, so that's a lifetime of travel for me. So yes, we have right here in British Columbia what the people around the world travel to see, and we live in one of the most beautiful and diverse places on the planet, and I know I'm preaching to the converted. The raw wilderness, the rugged coastlines, our towering mountains, the vibrant cities, the relaxing rural and resort communities and welcoming people, and a diversity of indigenous cultures. This is an amazing combination not found anywhere else in the world. BC's natural beauty and its authentic culture are truly something to behold. So together with communities and tourism businesses, industry partners and stakeholders, and residents from across the province, we've been working to brand and market British Columbia's unique roots and places. And we're doing so in a way that's respectful and makes BC even more attractive than it already is to the world's responsible travelers. In essence, we're trying to speed recovery and have greater dispersion of travelers throughout BC by creating an effective way to brand and market and develop BC tourism experiences, encouraging travelers to visit more places in more seasons. So what you see here are the six potential iconic routes and places with their internal internal, internal working titles only, which you might recall from our presentation in 2020. We're in the process of validating whether this is the right number of iconics and if these are the right ones, and of course, taking the time to incorporate indigenous perspectives into our thinking. We've also been doing research and indigenous resident and industry engagement to ensure that each new place brand has a compelling and unifying story that will make us stand out from the global competition and attract the right kind of traveler to British Columbia. Now, what's the benefit to you in all of this? Let's look ahead at this scenario. 10 years from now, British Columbia is considered a must-see destination. These new routes and places are known in the global consciousness. 10 years from now, travelers think of BC with the same level of awareness as Tuscany or Patagonia or the Great Barrier Reef, and visitors, tra visitors travel trade and travel media interest is at an all-time high. 10 years from now, businesses are profitable and jobs are easier to fill because the visitor season is longer, and your communities are thriving year-round. New investments in experience development have made all of BC even more appealing to visit in more seasons, and by integrating destination development with marketing strategies, we've strengthened, together we've strengthened each of the routes and places to make them stand out even more. Tourism is even more important to British Columbia's stewardship and economic resilience. In short, the new routes and places are being developed to be more powerful magnets to attract responsible travelers to your businesses and to your communities. So, where are we at with all of this? Well, this past year, despite the challenges we've all faced due to the pandemic, we took the time to do extensive research and engagement, which continues as we speak. Many of you this morning in the room were kind enough to give us your time and be involved in a workshop or an interview. And based on the results of all of this work, we expect to launch the first wave of these new brands next year in 2023. I get asked, why are we taking our time to develop these iconics? Because it's important to get it right. We've only got one chance to launch the first one. What we're trying to do is meant to benefit your businesses and your communities for the long term, and we need to take time to listen and to understand how we can do the branding and the experience development in a way that's respectful and responsible. 
We want to build these brands in a way that brings people here the way we want them to travel. Interacting with locals, staying longer, treading lightly on the land, contributing more than they take, and traveling to places that are further afield, taking the pressure off of some of BC's hotspots. Now, we've spoken to almost 1,800 people so far across the province, and we're not finished yet. We're listening to what you've had to say, and we're distilling and making sense of everything. And we're inspired by what we've been hearing. And when I say we, I mean ourselves and the partners that we're very grateful to have had working with us on this strategy. Indigenous Tourism BC, the regional destination management organizations, and the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture, and Sport. We are all working on this together on your behalf. My colleagues and I are passionate about the work that we're doing. We're passionate about building a new and exciting way for the world's travelers to think about British Columbia. And we are inspired every day by the potential of this strategy and appreciate that many of you have taken the time to tell us that this project gives you something exciting to look forward to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. This is the time to try something new and something bold and set big goals. And this has been one of the most ambitious projects uh, and the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive all around British Columbia. One of the other updates that I wanna provide you on is another secret sauce initiative, a long-term initiative that we believe will lead to a competitive advantage for British Columbia. This initiative is one that will make us more effective and efficient with our marketing spend. We've been working on this for a few years testing and now using shared technology, shared data, shared expertise in an alliance that we call the Tourism Data Hub. This is our made in BC shared technology system that gives us real time intelligence to drive our marketing campaigns and tactics. I am grateful to Barrett Fisher at Tourism Whistler and Roy Schwinn at Destination Vancouver for their co-investment in this ma major initiative and their belief in what we're building over the last few years. In the last two years, we've been able to get the required systems up and running, get data governance in place, and add in the expertise, and now the shared systems and processes are being used in all of our campaigns. We are seeing the greater efficiency, we are seeing the greater effectiveness, and we are seeing greater learnings. And we've now been able to expand and include more organizations, such as Tourism Kelowna, Tourism Richmond, and most recently, Destination Canada. So what I wanted to do was share with you how we've expanded access to include others to benefit from this work as well. With the absence of many travelers over the last two years, Many DMOs around the province have had less budget to promote their destination. We decided that this was an opportunity to pool our funds, to work together to promote travel to BC. And in particular, we decided we could apply our collective joint efforts to convert potential travelers from expensive source markets like the US. We call this coordinated approach full funnel marketing, which basically identifies how travelers plan their trip from inspiration to planning and booking, and it looks at creating a strong, coordinated user experience. It identifies where we can each best play a role and invest our marketing dollars to increase the collective impact with our limited funds. And it avoids us competing against each other for the same traveler. So we used the knowledge and the systems in the Tourism Data Hub in two recent pilots that I'm gonna share with you now. First of all, to promote travel to BC, we learned this past fall, we learned that Vancouver, Whistler, Richmond, Kelowna, and Victoria were considering executing marketing campaigns in Washington when the borders were gonna be opening. So together we pooled our funds, we agreed to one campaign approach, we then launched that campaign with audience sharing between us to motivate Washingtonians to come to BC. 
Second of all, to promote ski in the United States, we partnered with Destination Canada and our 13 beautiful destination ski resorts in BC to try this new approach in California this fall and winter. Destination Canada invested $3 million to captivate that top of mind awareness and interest to come skiing British Columbia, then we at Destination BC used our resources to convert that interest to consideration to BC, to get people actively researching and planning ski, and then we drove the referrals through to the 13 destination ski resorts who could close the sale. Full funnel, from the moment of inspiration to booking, enabled by the Tourism Data Hub. To build on these shared efforts, we are adding more DMO City partners for our spring campaign, which launched earlier this month in BC and Alberta. And we are expanding, we are looking at expanding the national approach to data sharing across Canada. We're adding more and more opportunities for more organizations here in BC to participate. So stay tuned to learn more about how you can participate in the capabilities that have been created by the Tourism Data Hub in the near future. This video with Destination Canada and Tourism Kelowna shares some of their experiences being part of this leading edge collaborative efforts. And a real focus for us is on learning. It's so that we can continuously improve on the work that we do. And that's why the project that we are doing on the Data Hub with Destination BC and 13 ski partners, the work that was executed in California recently, is so important. It's helping us understand how to improve our marketing and leverage our marketing dollars. This partnership gives us a stronger line of sight to where we can reach, inspire, and convert travelers to consider and plan a visit to Kelowna. And we can do this alongside trusted partners in destination marketing while keeping our own marketing strategy and tactics in play. We can work together to find and target consumers and then layer in our own call to action and invitation through our own brand to consumers. And I really want to credit Maya and the leadership of the DBC team here for taking the model of what they're doing within the province and stretching the learning and the competencies right across the country. They look at the big picture and understand that collectively, if we all get better, it raises up everybody's outcomes. With data and audience sharing and segmentation, it's not about having a traveler choose one destination over another in a competitive way. It's an opportunity to reach more qualified audience and work together to have them consider more destinations in BC or pique their interest in a return visit. I would say the proof is already in the pudding. When you look at the outcomes of us learning from this recent Data Hub project, we've been able to reduce the cost of delivering leads to partners. In real time, we've been able to improve the efficiency of our tactics, and we've learned more efficient workflow processes. So collectively, we're, we are a lot stronger. This is a true Team BC approach, and it's very inspiring, and I'm really pleased that Kelowna and the Central Okanagan is a key part of it. It's true, you know, working together collaboratively, it, it, it works. And when I think about it, it's Canada's secret weapon when it comes to being competitive, because as Canadians, we work really well together. Love that last line. We do work well together as Canadians, right? <laughs> So that's it for me. That's a high-level overview of our marketing uh, focus for 2022. I hope that we are going to see you uh, join the session that Maria and Carla will host at 11.15, and uh, we look forward to sharing more details of our plans. I'd now like to introduce Ali McKay, our Vice President of Destination Management, to share more of the inspiring work being done at Destination BC. Thank you. Well, thanks, Maya, and good morning, everyone. I know for the last 20 years, you have grown accustomed to having a McKay present during Destination BC's presentation. And I assure you, while I'm not related to Grant McKay, who retired last year, but it was wonderful to see him last night, I am currently leading what was Grant's area, the fabulous destination management team. I've worked at Destination BC for over 16 years, first starting off as a member in the research department. And more recently, I've had the honor of leading the Destination Development Program. Over the last two years, we've caught a glimpse of what our world would look like without tourism. And as we look ahead, travel and tourism is at a crossroads. As travel returns, it can bounce back to business as usual, which if history repeats itself, will place an unsustainable burden on some of our destinations and communities, 
or tourism, as we've been talking about, can proactively bounce forward and adopt a stewardship approach that better balances the needs and growth of our visitors with the needs of our residents and desired growth of our destinations, while ensuring that tourism businesses of all sizes are healthy, profitable, and sustainable over the long run. Since before the pandemic, there was a growing need for greater stewardship, more responsible travel that balances the social, cultural, environmental, and economic dimensions of our industry. This has been further accelerated by COVID and the climate crisis. Destination stewardship is essential to future-proof our industry and our communities as better places to live, work, and play today as well as for generations to come. Tourism, as one of BC's iconic industries, we can do our part in building a greener and more equitable society through inclusive and clean growth. While we at Destination BC are a destination management organization, we're increasingly viewing our work through a lens of stewardship. When we launched our last three-year corporate strategy in 2020, Destination stewardship was one of three pillars, and we now realize it's actually the foundation. It needs to be reflected in everything that we do, now and well into the future. This can be seen in the way that we're engaging more residents in our planning, supporting more Indigenous tourism businesses, and working to make travel more inclusive. And we're working with our regional partners to identify areas where we can support the work that they're leading and help amplify it provincially. Around BC, there are many efforts being made to becoming a world-renowned accessible destination, sharing traveler information on how to travel more responsibly, and commitments are being made to adhere to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Here are just a few examples happening in each of the regions. The Thompson Okanagan Tourism Association, an absolute leader in sustainability, is a strategic... <laughs> is a strategic partner in the 2022 Green Wine Future, which is the most ambitious environmental conference ever organized for the global wine community. Kootenai Rockies Tourism has become the first Green Step certified sustainable tourism destination in Canada. In the Vancouver Coast and Mountains region, a sustainable tourism council has come together so that they can develop and support implementation of an action plan for their region. Northern BC Tourism is supporting sustainable growth of Indigenous tourism by continuing to inform Indigenous stakeholders of ITBC's valuable programs. In the Caribou-Chilcotin Coast region, a Tourism Sustainability Committee will support the regional commitment that they've made through the Responsible Tourism Institute's Biosphere Certification. And Tourism Vancouver Island is working with Spinal Cord Injury BC to provide businesses with accessibility consultations and visitors with guides to accessible spaces and experiences. <laughs> Speaking of accessibility, I also want to highlight and recognize Kathleen Harvey for her work in leading our organization's efforts over the last three years to offer a more robust travel experience in British Columbia to travelers with diverse abilities. <laughs> Kathleen is the manager of visitor services at Destination BC, and because of her work with us, she was invited to join a global advisory board for travelability to inspire and educate the global travel industry to provide accessible experiences to help people of all abilities enjoy travel just as much as everyone else. Looking ahead, we want to help foster the growing commitment to environmental sustainability and community resiliency throughout the province and the tourism industry. 
We will use our resources and our own growing expertise and support others like our regional partners, our communities, each one of you who are all leading in your own areas. And as we apply a destination stewardship lens to more of our work, we will work internally to better integrate our own destination management and marketing efforts to manage the flow and dispersion of visitors to places and spaces and times of the year that can benefit from more travelers. We are also developing new learning resources so more tourism businesses can take those meaningful steps to reduce their own emissions and address climate change. The time for action is now, and we are, are moving in the right direction, together with all of you. I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Emron Gill, Director of Industry Partnerships and Visitor Services, and he'll share more about the work we're doing at Destination BC around diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Thanks, Ali, and good morning, everyone. Along with my colleague, Kathleen Harvey, I've had the pleasure of leading our diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility efforts, also known as DEIA, and working with our internal steering committees, project committees, and external consultants to move this important work forward. Today, I'll speak about how we're listening, learning, and taking action in the development of a DEIA strategy and provide an in-depth update on our inclusive marketing work. In recent years, many organizations have been rightfully called upon to reflect on their role in advancing DEIA, and Destination BC has been no exception. We understand our responsibility to do better, and that the greatest contribution we can make to changing structural inequities is sustained action within our organization and within our work Equity and anti-racism work are foundational to building a truly inclusive province and to better serve our industry and the people of British Columbia. Now, while, D while DEIA is a lens that is applied to all aspects of our work, in 2021, we partnered with the external diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility subject matter experts and learned more about the experiences of our employees, especially equity-deserving groups and how their experiences differ due to societal inequities that have shaped behaviors, systems, and processes. This was done through a comprehensive DEIA culture audit. Through an inclusive marketing audit, we learned that there's much more we can do to ensure we are authentically representing British Columbians in all our marketing and industry programs. We understand that DEIA requires a constant commitment to unlearning and relearning. We provided foundational learning for staff that gave us some time to reflect on some hard truths. Topics included unconscious bias, inclusive marketing, microaggressions, combating tokenism, and more. We also continued to implement our accessibility framework and action plan, specifically as it relates to addressing physical and cognitive barriers. For example, we now have over 500 businesses that have included their accessibility information in their hellobc.com listings. Today, I'll focus on our inclusive marketing efforts, which will help us all ensure that a greater variety of stories from BC's people and cultures are authentically showcased. The stories that make our communities and our province the open and welcoming place we all want it to be for everyone. Now, one thing we've traditionally seen in marketing is that underrepresented communities only show up when a brand is promoting a specific cultural experience. And while these cultural experiences are an important part of their identity, these Canadian communities also want to see themselves reflected elsewhere and in activities that are part of their everyday lives, whether it's skiing, golfing, or dining out. But inclusive marketing is more than just including a diversity of British Columbians in images or videos we produce. While this work is rooted in representation, it's also about creating a safe space for diverse perspectives and voices, and about helping BC's increasingly diverse population see themselves in and part of our work. Here's a great example from Jalen Bastos, one of five influencers we partnered with on the Share Your Love for BC contest last year. Train's coming back. Urban ecologist, y'all. <laughs> Forget me. This is 
is what birds have to put up with. Hi, my name is Jalen Bastos. I'm a queer, non-binary, urban wildlife ecologist, animal behavioralist, and educator here in the city of Vancouver. I have always just been like this creative kind of wild child, and it's still the same today. Oh my goose. Look at them. I moved to Vancouver from Toronto in 2015 to study at UBC. And I had done no research before coming here. So when I got off that plane and I saw those mountains for the first time, I was shocked. It was honestly so incredible. And one of the first things that I noticed was how accessible and well-maintained the green spaces were here. Here I am, still creek. When I moved here, I was able to like rekindle that connection with the environment. I started off hiking, trail running, then migrated to mountain biking, now rock climbing, now I'm a rock climbing instructor. I mean, it's like the classic BC story where you move here and you just cycle through all the different recreational outdoor activities. Oh, amazing, amazing. When people think of wildlife in British Columbia, they typically think of the charismatic megafauna or the largest, most popular animals, right? That's like whales, cougars, bears. But for me, urban wildlife is my passion. And one of the ways that I am studying urban wildlife here in Vancouver is through a network of wildlife cameras. And I have them spread out throughout the entire city of Vancouver. And what this network of cameras allows me to do, it allows me to estimate the different populations of animals like raccoons, coyotes, and determine why is it that they're thriving and living in the different parts of the city that they are. Oh my gosh, they're foraging in this area. Oh, look, they're kind of fighting. Oh my gosh! People are often surprised to find out that there's a direct thread between both queer people and wildlife within an urban setting. Oftentimes in a more rural or naturalized setting, right, queer people and wildlife are focused more so on survival. In the case of queer folks, we're often forced into situations that make us feel unsafe. And it's similar for wildlife in the sense that in a more naturalized or rural setting, they are in much more competition with one another. When you enter into an urban setting, both queer folks and urban wildlife are able to flourish. For so long, I had to hide parts of myself. I had to suppress the most authentic parts of me, my blackness, my queerness, my Latinx identities. And this was largely because I didn't feel safe enough to share them with the world. And I also didn't see myself in the world. For me, being visibly queer is so important, especially taking up space, being bold especially within academia, is important because it functions as this invitation. It lets others know that they are, one, not alone, and two, there's a space for them to find success. I live and love in this city. That's not English. Let's try this again. I love Vancouver, and I live here for a lot of different reasons. But in the seven years since I've lived here, I've never once seen an orca. In seven years, in seven years, every time I go to the beach, I'm like, Maybe this will be the day. And it so far hasn't happened yet. That would be a dream come true. And I'm just putting that out into the universe. What a great story. And we can't wait to share more of those stories with you in the future. So while our audits were occurring last year, we knew we can wait to start making our marketing more inclusive. Here are some of the efforts our team has made to date. We've worked with more British Columbians who identify as black, indigenous, people of color, and or the LGBTQI2S plus community. New brand photo shoots in locations across BC focused on diversity in front of and behind the lens. We've also published accessible tourism guides for BC's largest cities, with more in the works. Our 2021 Open to More Summer campaign included campaigning landing pages, content, and ads in four different languages, English, Simplified Chinese, Traditional Chinese, and Punjabi. And we've been working in partnership with Indigenous Tourism BC to represent Indigenous culture, history, and stories into all facets of our content. So what's next? Well, the inclusive marketing audit has been completed, and we are taking these learnings to develop a plan that includes short, medium, and long-term actions that will support our efforts to ensure we are authentically representing the diversity of British Columbia's people in our marketing. 
We are also in the midst of completing the development of a DEIA strategy for Destination BC and will begin implementation in 2022. By its very nature, tourism is the most diverse industry in the world, and all of us have a role to play. From authentically representing our communities, understanding how others experience the world, and ensuring our experiences are safe, accessible, and inclusive for equity-deserving groups, so we can use our collective efforts to ensure everyone starts to see British Columbia as an inclusive destination. Now this process of learning and change will take time, and we are committed to implementing our learnings around building diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility into everything we do. And we are committed to sharing these learnings with BC's tourism industry businesses, sectors, associations, marketing organizations, so everyone can benefit. Thank you to everyone who has been on this journey with us so far, and we look forward to con continuing down this path with you. Emran, you and the entire cross-organizational team working on DEIA deserve efforts, deserve a huge kudo for the journey that you've started. This work is so, so important. So another journey, important journey, we've been on with all of you is the destination development work around the province. It's been about five years since about 1,800 people engaged in the creation of destination development strategies across BC. Those strategies led to new relationships and networks, increased collaboration, and a lot of progress on implementation. Now those efforts have really come to fruition and we are seeing great success with those plans accessing project funding. It's truly been a pivotal year. We no longer have to explain what destination development is. It's showing up as priority criteria for economic development funding. We've even seen new funding that's specifically dedicated to supporting tourism-related infrastructure projects. Isn't that just amazing? We give a huge kudos to the federal government, the provincial government, and all of the funding agencies for the remarkable support of destination development these last two years. Did you know that almost $84 million has been provided in direct destination development dedicated funding? Plus there's been an additional 19.4 million provided to support tourism dependent municipalities and significantly more funding for indigenous communities from both provincial and federal funds. In reaction to COVID and other disasters, investments in tourism projects in BC have been at an all time high. This includes important, significant projects that will boost our economy, create jobs and new reasons to visit, will support existing businesses, create new experiences or revenue streams, and create new ways to make tourism businesses and the communities they operate in more resilient. For example, the Great Bear Rainforest Marine Trail, an Indigenous development project, will assist coastal First Nations in the creation of a network of shore accessible campsites and recreation areas. The Great Northern Circle Route, led by Northern BC Tourism, received funding to develop and implement a comprehensive signage and wayfinding program to align with the Iconics Initiative. We've seen new attractions, such as the award-winning Malahat Skywalk on the Spirit Loop, and new community spaces like the North Vancouver shipyards. And more funding was allocated in the Kootenai Rockies for the installation of electric vehicle charging stations at key resorts and attractions. Throughout BC, planning areas and regions are working together to identify projects that will really help with the recovery and then prioritizing them for action. All of this will contribute to the well-being of the over five million people who call BC home. So let's hear from Kerry Chong, Director of Destination and Industry Development at Tourism Richmond on a provincial collaboration that's really soaring.
The BC Bird Trail was developed to raise awareness of the diversity and quality of BC's birding experiences and support birdwatching focused travel and conservation across the province. The BC Bird Trail, with the support of Destination BC's Cooperative Marketing Partnerships Programme, includes Central Vancouver Island, South Fraser, Fraser Valley, the Columbia Valley, Indigenous Tourism BC and Birds Canada. We're a big flock and we're getting bigger each year. The investment in tourism development in British Columbia has been amazing over the last few years. In Richmond, we've been lucky to have Destination BC facilitate a larger destination development strategy for Metro Vancouver. So we have a vision and a plan that we're all building and investing towards. The Metro Vancouver Destination Development Strategy identified an opportunity to enhance nature and wellness experiences, including bird viewing. The BC Bird Trail is an excellent way to move visitors around the region and support tourism in all our communities. So for 2022, we're revisiting some of those destination development strategies based on the new realities around COVID, new engagement with First Nations, and the direction of the Vest and Iconics work. And we're also expanding a new centralized database to better track, support, and report on these tourism projects. This will help us highlight the success and impact of all of this great investment and will help us to gather data that we then can all use to better manage our future tourism impacts. COVID has held back travel across the planet, yet here in BC and around the world, there still is tourism development and management activities happening. We're not just looking ahead at the powerful role investment in tourism can bring to you and your communities for the future. We're investing in and building that future together with you now. In this next video, Claire Mason, Director of Corporate Communications, will talk about another aspect of our destination stewardship efforts, emergency management. BC has not had an easy few years, and our tourism sector has been hit harder than most. We've endured a global pandemic and climate-induced emergencies from heat domes and wildfires to atmospheric rivers and Arctic flows. But through it all, we've supported each other through collaborative communication and emergency management processes focused on the needs of our visitor economy. At Destination BC, we continually gather information from all levels of government, from various agencies, businesses, and communities to help inform our work and help us determine the measures we need to take and the information we need to share to best support our industry and our visitors during a crisis. Over the last year, a small but mighty cross-organizational team has gathered insights and information so we could adjust our marketing efforts, create new messaging guides and know-before-you-go content, and conduct crisis communications training for industry partners and these collaborative efforts will continue to ensure we are all well positioned to share timely and accurate information on travel routes, trip planning, transportation, visitor servicing, health protocols, border requirements, and much more to help industry support their employees and communicate effectively with travelers. Chaired by the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport and the Tourism Industry Association of BC, we also play an active role in BC's Tourism Emergency Management Committee, which ensures that emergency systems support the safety of visitors, the viability of tourism businesses, and our reputation as a safe and welcoming destination. Our collective goal is to help reduce our industry's vulnerabilities and risks, and lessen the potentially adverse impacts to the visitor experiences during emergencies. This is by no means an easy task, and while we have made progress, there is a great deal of work ahead of us all. While every day throws us a new challenge, I believe BC can look to the future with guarded optimism. We have learned a lot as we've navigated these crises as an industry. We are working more collaboratively than ever. I want to personally thank industry for the feedback we have received over the last few years, and the work you have all done to address these challenges. There are so many amazing examples of tourism businesses, organizations, and communities coming together to support residents and visitors alike. 
here is one community that is doing all it can to protect BC's reputation as a safe and welcoming destination, truly living up to its name. Hope has always been unique. Sitting at the junction of four highways, we have been given access to some of the most beautiful outdoor wilderness experiences in British Columbia, but we've been through a lot in the last few years. Due to our close vicinity to Metro Vancouver, Hope became a hotspot for tourism during the pandemic. We saw a situation where our lakes and rivers were bombarded with people, our trails were overwhelmed, we had visitors parking on the front lawns of our residents and blocking roadways. Then in August, when the wildfires came, Hope really shut down. All I wanted to do was for the rain to start and for us to have a sense of calm again. Little did I know how powerful my wishes were when in November, over two days, our highways were wiped out by landslides and flooding. We had visitors stranded on Highway 7 in the dark and our town was without power. I can't imagine how scary and fearful that must have felt sitting in that darkness. It would be deafening. Our community really stepped up and came together. Panago Pizza brought in generators and made food for all those who were stranded in hope. Silver Creek Travel Lodge opened up their doors without power and allowed those who were stranded here to sleep overnight. And our fishing guides were coming in and out, bringing supplies and helping residents get home. Our amazing visitor center service staff came together and created a community collaboration where they would collect a list of residents willing to open their doors and offer accommodations, rooms and food for those who were stranded in hope. During COVID, our visitor center staff created the sidewalk service where visitors could come into town and park in two designated parking stalls and Brian and Sarah pop out and offer the services on the sidewalk. During the Linton wildfires, our visitor center staff stepped up and they helped us to assist to collect massive amount of donations that we were taken to Tuck Wyoming Village to help with the relief center that was set up. They have passion that you cannot teach and it shows in every visitor center experience. I am so proud of our community and I am so proud of our team. We're looking forward now. We are hope after all. Oh, I'm back. Uh, that's an amazing example of how uh, tourism is part of the fabric of every community in British Columbia and how the tourism industry always steps up when uh, communities need help. So as you've heard today, we've all done a lot of work over the last year to set us up for a brighter future. We're inspired, we're optimistic, and we're making the most of our opportunities. One of our most important steps forward has been the articulation of a stronger commitment to take action on lasting and meaningful reconciliation. We're committed to understanding, supporting, and implementing the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, British Columbia's Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act, and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada Calls to Action. Here are a few of our commitments and the actions we'll be taking this year. It means a lot to me to be able to share this with you and have you be part of this important work. We commit to elevating Indigenous tourism businesses in our marketing activities, content and development programs. In 2022, for the first time, there's been co-development of annual marketing plans to ensure alignment between Destination BC and Indigenous tourism BC. We commit to the evolution of the supernatural British Columbia brand in collaboration with ITBC to ensure deeper integration of Indigenous values, voices, and stories in the provincial tourism brand. And we commit to increasing opportunities for Indigenous representation throughout our organization. And I'm pleased to introduce Karen Tankara, a very talented individual and a member of the Songhees Nation as our new director, Indigenous and Regional Partnerships. In her role, Karen will assist in the development and evolution of our efforts towards reconciliation, including increasing Indigenous cultural knowledge and understanding throughout our organization. We'll share more on these and other commitments and actions through our various communication platforms over the year. I'd also like to say thank you to the Stalo Nation and Tourism Chilliwack for being a model of how communities, tourism operators, and First Nations can work together through reconciliation. I truly enjoyed your session yesterday and learned a lot, so thank you. And I do want to add that we're committed to continuing our support of Indigenous Tourism BC 
as a true partner in tourism. We've worked with ITBC and have supported the development of Indigenous cultural tourism for over 20 years. Last year, we wove our two organizations closer together in many ways. As our minister says, we're paddling together and we're looking forward together. Last week, uh, Brenda Baptiste, the chair of ITBC, was inducted into the Order of British Columbia, a richly deserved recognition of Brenda's many contributions to our province over her career. And I'm thrilled to welcome Brenda to the stage to say a few words on behalf of ITBC. Sorry, I'm short. Wow, a lot of people showed up. It's early. I didn't expect, I thought half of you would still be sleeping. So good job. You're here and committed. That's what this is all about. I'm Brenda Baptiste. I'm the chair of Indigenous Tourism BC, and I've been honored to be the chair for almost, gosh, I think over 18 years. And through that time, I've had the pleasure of working with Destination BC and their team. And it's funny, as we talk about reconciliation, Destination BC started this process of working on reconciliation before it was even a thing. 20 years ago, or 20, over 20 years ago, when we first started looking at the potential of Indigenous tourism in this province, it was Destina Destination BC, including Richard, Peter, uh, their team, Rod and Don, um, who were the, uh, the leaders at that time, they saw the potential and they saw the vision of creating economic prosperity and cultural revitalization within Indigenous communities. And that's why we started this process. We knew that we wanted to have a lot of our communities who were really struggling with poverty and social afflictions, we wanted to give them opportunities to thrive and the best way to do that was through tourism. One, because tourism is one of the few, as a matter of fact, one of the only industries that doesn't take anything away from the land. It actually gives back and builds a social fabric within any community. And you saw this over the last two years. People recognize the importance of tourism for your well-being, for your ability to explore and connect and engage. And truly, I think tourist, the tourism industry has come into its own as a result of all of the things that Richard described, whether it's the pandemic or the natural disasters that we've all been through and we've adapted and we've persevered. I didn't see Marcia there. <laughs> Destination BC has been an incredible partner through us, and I'm thrilled. The video that, um, that you showed earlier actually made me a little weepy. It's the first time I've seen it, but it, it, it embodies the meaning of Indigenous tourism and the connection that tourism has, uh, whether it's Indigenous or non-Indigenous in this province. And I believe that we are a leader in tourism, not only in this province, in this country, but globally. And I think that through... Um, maintaining that relationship, that commitment to reconciliation on both sides, from Destination BC to the Indigenous, Indigenous Tourism BC and our communities, we're going to become that much stronger. I have to really honor the province of BC, and I was saying last night, I am so proud to be from this province. I'm so proud to be the first province that has not only uh, adopted the principles of UNDRIP and DRIPA, and they're committed to that, but they're committed to reconciliation in terms of taking real action. And to have a minister who says, that's great, I love your sentiments, but what are we going to do? Let's move forward. What are we going to do? And that's exactly what we need, and that's exactly what Indigenous people in this province are saying. Reconciliation's fine, but let's work together and figure out how we're moving forward. Through our work with the alignment strategy, the Iconics, uh, the Iconics program, the commitment to stewardship, conservation of these beautiful lands that we're on, it aligns itself so perfectly with the Indigenous values and principles that we all share. And we are so happy to be a part of that. And I also love the fact that when I come to these sessions, this is always my favorite conference of the year. Sorry, I'm limping around, but uh, short term. 
You'll see me running around soon. Um, but what I love about these sessions is not only sharing the fellowship with all of you, and, and I've known some of you forever, and, and all of the young energy that's coming into this in industry makes me very excited for the future. Because when, as an Indigenous person, we work towards our seventh generation. It's, the, it's my granddaughter, my grandsons, who this legacy is going to have an impact on. And I want to honor Richard and his team and Destination BC and Marsha at Destination Canada and the, the minister in the province of BC for the legacy that they're leaving for the future of Indigenous people in this, in this province. This is not just a project and it's not something that's going to be uh, something not only that you can measure, but this is actually something that's going to have a real impact on the future of my grandchildren. They'll be able to speak their language. They'll be able to identify who they are as strong Okanagan silks men and women. They're going to take their place in leadership tables like they've never had in the history of our people. And you've been a part of that. So thank you so much. And I'm so excited to see where we're going to go in the next little while. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. You've been an inspiration for me personally for nearly 20 years, and you make us all want to be better and do better. Before I wrap up today, we want to show you one more story, or share one more story with you, courtesy of a video the Tourism Industry Association of British Columbia created. We wanted to share our culture with the world um, in an authentic and meaningful way. And that's truly how we want to educate visitors around the world. You know what, we feel that by, through Mox and Trails, by taking people out on the land, by taking them out on this lake, by hiking our trails, by spending the day with them around a campfire, by eating with them, sharing our culture, that's how we're gonna break down the stereotypes. And really that's why Mox and Trails got started, was based in education. We wanted to share our culture and teach everyone around the world, visitors and guests that come into our territory, a little bit more about the indigenous culture here in this region. I think we stumbled upon something really good here because it seems we're always getting asked by our neighbors now more than ever than guests and tourists that are coming from around the world that just want to learn. Right? We share the same community together, but yet we're still worlds apart. And that's what our job is, is to you know, build that bring those two worlds a little closer together. That's a great message to end with today. Tourism brings our worlds, all of our worlds, a little closer together. Today we shared some of the important work we're doing in partnership with you. Building back travel to British Columbia now through our marketing plans, generating future travel to and throughout British Columbia, and more business for you through our Invest in Iconic strategy. Ensuring tourism is managed well for all British Columbians through destination stewardship, the destination stewardship lens we're applying to all our work, building and preparing for the future through our partnerships on destination development and emergency management, and creating lasting, meaningful reconciliation by taking action on our commitments. It's a privilege to be part of an organization that is working so hard every day on behalf of this industry. I'm inspired by the groundbreaking work that Maya, Ali, Maria, Jacqueline, Imran, and our entire team are doing, as well as the equally groundbreaking and inspiring work that's happening all over British Columbia. We don't know what the future holds, but we're optimistic, we're inspired, and we're ready for whatever comes our way. We look forward to working with you through the challenges that will come and to achieve the successes we're all seeking. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.